Umbro, a question you might ask your friend, but also a brand of football boots that have since fallen out of favor. And inside this box, I have the latest offering from the Umbro brand called the Toco Pro. Toco being Italian for touch. And that really is the focus of this football boot featuring kangaroo leather, some interesting foam that we have seen on other Umbro boots in the past, a knitted element to it as well, and brand new sole plate and stud pattern tooling all coming together for a retail price of 160 pounds, which is roughly about $210. Regardless, Umbro is a brand that's been around for a long time. And while they've had their ups and downs, I'd like to believe that almost everyone watching this video has at the very least heard of Umbro before. The question that I wanna answer though, is should you buy a pair of Umbro football boots in 2020? So with that question in mind, we're gonna go over all the details of the new Toco Pro and basically basically determine whether or not they're worth it. And of course, also take a look at how they fit and feel on feet. So if you're interested in learning more about them, please stick around, watch the entire review. And if you're interested in a pair of these for yourself, I'll leave a little pop-up on screen or you can click the first link down below. That'll take you to the review page on my website where you'll find buy it now links to pick these up in Europe only at this point in time for 160 pounds, which like I said, roughly translates to about $210. It actually says the US retail price is $250 on the box, but let's hope that's not the case. If you guys do end up enjoying this video and would like to see more reviews of football boots from smaller brands like Umbro, don't forget to support this one with a like and let me know which boots you'd like to see reviewed specifically down below in the comment section. And if you're new here watching for the first time and don't wanna miss out on weekly content on everything football boots, make sure you hit that subscribe button. Now, I don't wanna spend too much time talking about the look of these boots because for the most part, I actually like the way that they look. The colorway I think is great, mostly black in color with the classic Umbro double diamond on the lateral side, no branding on the medial side, the Toco logo in gloss black, very subtle on the heel, the accent of royal blue in the exposed knitted material around the ankle area, and then a white sole plate. I just think it looks very clean. The reason why I do wanna talk about the look though is because if you look at the overall design and aesthetic, the silhouette of this boot, I guess I should say, it seems a little bit unbalanced where you have this rear portion of the boot, especially through the midfoot, where it's this knitted material with a fuse overlay that's very sleek, very streamlined, super smooth. And then you have this area through the forefoot and kind of spanning into the midfoot that looks a little bit kind of chunky and bulbous and kind of like a cartoon bumblebee in my opinion. I'm not exactly sure how to describe it, but you end up with this kind of chunky front half and then this very sleek rear half, which is kind of what Umbro were going for from a design standpoint. But the reason for this unusual look to the front area of the boot is because Umbro have done something really interesting in combining kangaroo leather and D3O foam. Now, some of you might've seen my review of the Umbro UX Acuro 3, which if I'm not mistaken, was actually the last Umbro boot that I reviewed on the channel and its claim to fame was the incorporation of D3O foam which is a special type of memory foam that's very good at dampening impact which is kind of what you would expect to be used on something that would be labeled as a control boot which is exactly what this is and just like that UX Acuro 3 this utilizes D3O foam but with the incorporation of leather as well and aside from the sole plate and stud pattern the design of the upper on the Umbro Toco Pro is very much like that UX Acuro, which is a good and bad thing because I think there's certain things about it that work really well. And then there's other things that I think definitely could be modified to fit a little bit better. Those are some of my main issues in regards to this boot, but we'll talk about that in more detail during the on feet portion of the video. Now you'll notice that the leather itself does not have any stitching at all. There's this kind of debossed ridge design running across the forefoot. And then in all of the raised areas, there is very clearly some form of memory foam D3O underneath the leather. And then the part here, as you get closer to the laces, it's super soft, it's free of any obstruction. It arguably feels a little bit better without the memory foam, but the dampen sensation that you get from this is actually a pretty positive feel. And then as a large kind of pass pad area on the medial side of the foot, you have a very large chunk of D3O, which is actually kind of cool. If you look through the lace hole, you can see there's a little bit of orange peeking through and that's because D3O foam is famously orange in color. So it is in fact there, they're not lying to you. Internally, there seems to be a padded 
kind of slightly foamy mesh liner as well. So there's lots of softness, lots of cushion, lots of padding to the leather portion of this upper in general. But to my surprise, I was a little bit worried about it kind of not translating to very good feel for the ball, but you actually feel the ball quite nicely. In fact, the foam is nowhere near as noticeable as I was expecting it to be. And if we are again, comparing it to that UX Acura, which was significantly thinner, this just feels like a more padded variation of that. But because this is kangaroo leather as a base material, as you wear them in, as they soften up, the boot just feels very flexible, feels very natural, and kind of what you would expect a kangaroo leather football boot to feel like. As far as the leather itself is concerned, like I mentioned, it is kangaroo leather. Because there's no stitching, that's typically a good thing in regards to durability, and something that Umbro is also claiming with this specific material is that it absorbs 75% less water than any other or a traditional leather football boot. Now, 75% less water uptake sounds like a very exaggerated stat to me, given the fact that Umbro didn't specify which leather, or I guess more specifically, which leather football boot they compared this to in terms of measuring actual water uptake. But because there isn't any stitching, because there isn't any open, I guess, splits in the upper, it is inevitably going to lead to less water uptake. And as a whole, if I had to compare this leather upper to anything else on the market right now, it's reminiscent of what you're going to find on the Copa 20 Plus and Copa 20.1, but obviously more padded because of the extra D3O foam. But if you like a super padded feel, but also want the softness and flexibility of leather, that's exactly what you get from the Toco. I really want to call it Taco for some reason. As we get to the midfoot, this is where the design gets a little bit weird in my opinion, but overall, I would say it works pretty pretty well. You have what is basically a reverse burrito style tongue. So for those that remember the Messi 16.1, this is somewhat similar to that in that as you can see, the upper from the medial side wraps over top of the foot and then tucks underneath the lateral side of the upper. And then it's kind of fully independent as you get to the top. And it's just a knitted material with kangaroo leather on top of that, which I really like to see. It gives you a nice uniform touch kind of flowing into the forefoot and toe box area that continues across the top of the foot. So that's good to see. And then of course it tucks underneath a knitted material that you have on the lateral side that starts a little bit sooner. That is obviously a little bit more structurally sound than what you'll find from the softer leather, giving you a nice locked in sensation through the midfoot. For me, it's the shape of this boot more so than the way that they did the tongue that is the issue. But again, I'll talk about that during the on feet portion of the video. But as far as reverse burrito style tongues go, this is actually one of the better executions that I've seen on a football boot. And I like the way that they did the lacing system where you have a dual lace hole set up at the bottom three points on the medial side and then everywhere else it just transitions into a single lace hole which again works better than you normally find with boots with this type of design you do have a low cut design moving towards the rear of the boot where there's a little bit of an extension piece with this elasticated knitted material does nothing is just pretty much there to look cool an internal plastic heel counter which has some decent firmness to it but for whatever reason feels a little bit shallow in terms of its shape when you actually have the boots on feet. And I think a lot of that has to do with the heel liner, which is this really soft synthetic suede material, but the padding that they've used is so, I guess, airy and just way too soft that what I find when you put these on is that it compresses all the way and you just end up sitting directly against this hard plastic heel counter and it's a little bit uncomfortable in comparison to a lot of high-end football boots. So that was definitely something that I noticed immediately when putting these on and wasn't a huge fan of to the point where heel blisters could potentially be an issue depending on how sensitive you are to, I guess, hardness of heel counters sitting directly against your heel and the shape of your heel in general. The insole is also fully removable. I'll give you guys a quick look at that. And it's pretty straightforward. It features a mesh liner on the surface. That's a little bit slick to the touch if I'm being honest. And then it's made from a single layer of this white foam that actually has some pretty decent thickness to it. Moving to the base of the boot, you're going to find an all new sole plate and stud pattern where you can see in comparison to the UX Acuro and a lot of other Umbro models, the studs aren't quite as short. It definitely still has the shorter stud approach where Umbro seems to be going after the hard ground market more so than the firm ground market. But this is kind of somewhere in the middle. And as an FG boot, the studs are definitely long enough in my opinion. Also, we're 
option if you play on artificial grass because the studs aren't too long. As far as the sole plate is concerned though, it features a dual density PVAX material. So one layer is the white area and then the other layer is of course this kind of darker blue color which is kind of a stiffener bar running through the heel, the midfoot, and then kind of runs along either side of the forefoot. Now I was expecting this to be very flexible um, kind of all the way through to provide a natural sensation, which is how it's kind of described. But to my surprise, it's a lot stiffer than I was expecting. And it kind of just wants to flex at the base of the forefoot rather than kind of having this gradual flex all the way to the toe. You can see this area it just doesn't really want to flex. It's really the only flex point is right here, which is not necessarily a bad thing. I wouldn't say that it feels overly stiff on feet, but I was expecting something that was a little bit more natural in terms of flex. But if you prefer a slightly stiffer sole plate, I think you're going to like this. Again, I had no issues with it. It was just different than what I was expecting it to feel like. As far as the stud pattern is concerned, it's very straightforward, pretty much featuring all conical studs, four at the heel, six in the forefoot, one support stud in the middle, and then they went for a little kind of mercurial-esque toe pick bladed stud, which every brand seems to be doing now. I don't think that's really gonna do anything for you. But again, in comparison to past FG stud patterns from Umbro, it's the same general layout, just slightly longer studs, which in terms of the traction provided, it's gonna be on par with most other football boots, not overly aggressive. You kind of know what to expect from this. When it comes to weight, something that's been kind of surprising about a lot of Umbro boots over the last few years is that they're a lot lighter than you'd expect them to be. However, that's not necessarily the case with the Toco Pro. In a size 9.5 US, you can see that the boots weigh in at 7.9 ounces, the equivalent of 223 grams, which if we're comparing this to other football boots in this particular category, like a Nike Tiempo, the Tiempo is a little bit lighter, the Puma King Platinum is a little bit lighter. It's gonna be very comparable in weight to something like a Copa 20.1 or a Copa 20 Plus, which isn't particularly light, but they're definitely not gonna feel heavy either. So as you can see, I've swapped out the stock black laces, which obviously go with the fairly low profile look that I think Umbro is going for with these for some royal blue reflective SR4U replacement laces, which are a perfect match for the royal blue accent you have at the heel, adds a little bit of flair to the boots and also makes yours different from everybody else with the same ones. Not that you're gonna run across somebody wearing Umbro Tocos. Nonetheless, it's a great way of changing up the style of your boots in a very inexpensive way. So if you're interested in some for yourself, the website to go to is www.sr4ulaces.com. There'll be a little pop-up on screen as well as a link down below in the description. So if you're interested in some for yourself, be sure to go ahead and check that out. Now the fit and feel is where I've been most let down by the Toco Pro. And it's not that they feel terrible on feet, far from it. I think the kangaroo leather along with the memory foam is actually very soft. It feels relatively flexible out of the box, but obviously softens up as you wear them in. And despite the sole plate feeling a little bit overly stiff in hand on feet, it feels pretty good. My issue is down to the shape as well as the fit in the heel, where the shape of this boot, I think largely down to the way that this upper transitions from knit to leather on the lateral side of the forefoot, it just doesn't feel very natural. There is a noticeable softness and extra stretch to the upper here and then a complete lack of it there and you really feel the seam quite a bit, which I find to be a little bit uncomfortable. And then the heel in particular, like I mentioned, the heel liner is a very, very soft foam material and it just compresses way too easily to the point where you just end up being pushed directly back against the heel counter, which is a hard plastic material. And the shape of the heel, the fit, just seems to be a little bit shallower than I think it should be. And it just rubs me the wrong way. It doesn't feel very comfortable. And blisters are just a concern with this particular boot when I wear them. So it's something to keep in mind. It could vary from person to person depending on the specific shape of your heel. As far as width is concerned, they're definitely not super wide, especially with the way that they've done the tongue and just the transition point between the leather and the knit, it feels like it's a very straight up and down shape to the boot. So if you have super wide feet, I definitely would not recommend these, but I do think they'll fit most people, especially after some break in time with the leather obviously able to stretch. And then as far as sizing is concerned, I'm wearing these in my usual size 9.5 US and they run maybe a touch long, but again, that's kind of down to the shape. Umbro likes to do these slightly narrower toe box areas, which does leave a little bit of extra length. 
Nonetheless, I would definitely recommend going true to size if you are looking to get the best possible fit. So to conclude this review, like other Umbro boots that I've tried over the last few years, the Toco Pro is actually pretty good, but pretty good isn't necessarily good enough because the question that I asked at the start of this video is should you buy these over football boot options from some of the more popular brands? And when you compare these to their competition, I'm not sure they're the best option. And that's not to say that I couldn't recommend the Toco Pro because I really wanted to like these. I think there's a lot of good ideas that Umbro have executed quite well, but it's maybe a little bit lacking in refinement where I don't think the shape is quite right. The transition from knit to leather, especially on the lateral side here, feels a little bit off to me. The fit and comfort in the heel just wasn't very good in my opinion. And that's not something that I often complain about with top end football boots. So while they've done a lot of things really well here, I don't think that they've done everything well enough to justify picking this over options from Nike, Adidas, Puma, Mizuno, or most other brands for that matter. So at full price, I don't think that it's something that should be on your list of considerations, but at a discounted price, or if you're just a hardcore Umbro fan, I think that this is a pretty solid effort by Umbro. Anyways, guys, that's it for my review. Hopefully you enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to support it with a like. Again, if you're interested in a pair of these for yourself, first link down below, that's gonna take you to the review page on my website, where you'll find Buy It Now links to pick up the Toco Pro in Europe only as of right now. If and when they become available in the US, there will be links provided on that page as well. But for the time being, whatever's available is linked in the description. If you have any questions regarding these boots, as always, leave them down below in the comment section, and I'll do my best to get an answer out to you. If you aren't subscribed to the channel already, make sure you hit that subscribe button along with the little bell notification so you get notified when the next new video goes live. You can find all my social media information linked down below in the description as well. Other than that, guys, thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.